Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the 2015 Midseason Invitational. And gentlemen, it all comes down to this game five. Who would have thought it? Faker versus Pawn in the mid lane. I mean, this is just story for the ages here. Midseason Invitational, who's the best in the world? Yeah, exactly right. This stuff writes itself, and it's going to be absolutely massive in that mid lane. I'm really interested now what EDG do with Pawn because he has got the most versatile champion pool, in my opinion, out of all mid laners. He plays the Jace, plays the Viz, also plays some control mages. More than I Faker? Think... I'm not going to make no, that. No, 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 he no, transcends Faker, everyone else. A lot. A lot of options to go to in that mid lane. Yeah, and I think also that it comes down to those two superpowers, Pawn against Faker. I think if you look out for any matchup and if anybody's giving their all, those two facing off against each other, and if one of them plays an assassin, I'm looking for a lot of blood, I look for a lot of high level play here. And I want to talk about top lane here. Because it's all coming down to team fight meta and who gets team fight priority and who gets to start those fights. Because top laners that have pressure in that lane get to keep their TP. They get to force the other person's summoner spells. They get to pressure them out, make them start the fight with half HP. So giving back, giving a TP into a fight and starting it off on the right foot gives those mid laners backline access, gives Faker on the Cassidy able to deal with depth, able to deal with that backline. So top lane is a big thing here. And I want to see, I want to see uh, Marin on something that he's comfortable on again because last game you saw it there when he's able to bully that lane around He's great in the team fights and he's more confident. See here's the thing around the team fighting meta Team fighting means that you bring a lot of utility to this like who's bringing the CC who's bringing the peel and whatnot That's the support. That's the jungler. I think we've talked a lot about Bangy and clear love They've both been stepping up. They've had pretty good games but the supports have been a little bit more bipolar. One of them has a really good showing, the other one not so much. It happens the other way around. I think these two guys are going to be the enablers. The last game, Mako, they prioritized the Annie again. But the top lane utility from Korra failed. You need to be both on the same page and play the team fights, right? When you have a team composition that is all about being together, you need to stick to that. And if the CC is not layered properly, you will lose regardless as to what team comp you play. I feel like... Especially the coaches have a big say here right now, and I hope that maybe we see some pick and ban wizardry. Uh, a lot of priority picks are coming out here. Um, it's the last game of the series. If you can put anything that maybe throws somebody off, um, maybe this is a winning point. Get yeah. rid of Alistar. That's the first pick ban thing that I want to see coming Any through Alistar, there. Yeah. Any Alistar, Alistar. I don't think the supports on either team are getting enough respect of what they're actually bringing actually to the series. Actually, Mako impressed me a lot. Like those stuns, flash stuns, where winning a lot of teamfights and a lot of skirmishes in the games before. But if you don't do them properly, though, you waste those abilities and you can't protect effectively. Well, we talk about how much this is going to come down to the team fighting specifically. Both of these teams have executed very well in team fights. Do we feel like the supports are the linchpin there? For no, no, it's, not just, it's, just a complete, it's a complete effort because the thing is, it might look at times in a team fight that you need to use your stuns like, oh, I see them clumped up, let's do it right now. But if you stun and your carries aren't there to damage and there's no follow-up and you just wasted a huge cooldown, you need to be really careful when you team fight so damn much to get these layered with the damage as well. All right, well, before we send it up to the caster booth, got to check in, see if anyone has decided to flip-flop their way to the winning side here with their predictions. Crumbs. For crumbs. <laughs> crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if well, we take a I lesson would, from yesterday, sir. I was sir. inclined to do so yesterday, but not so much today. I will stick by my... Initial pick of EDG. All right, anyone else? We're all good across the board. SKT, SKT, and EDG here. So still a split desk. There's only one way to find out how this will end. So let's head over to the caster desk for game five. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And we are ready to get into game five. What a weekend it has been. As I said before, we usually have to wait till the end of an entire season to get awesome matchups like this from teams around the world, but it's now, it's the Mid-Season Invitational. And in this last game here, EDG got comfort picks all around. They got such a strong composition, mm -hmm. but they right. clearly didn't know how to use the poke comp they had. They were fighting way too early, and Koro was simply just caught out way too much. And so much of this yeah. game is about what happens on the side lanes. Mid laners, they tend to just sit and farm in the start. Yeah, there have been hit or miss games for support.